So when do we see edema? Whenever there is some abnormality in whole of this cycle. So the definition of edema is abnormal collection of fluid in the interstitial spaces. So we have been talking about the blood vessel and we have the cells here and whenever the fluid it goes from the blood vessel and collects into the cells this abnormal collection will be called as edema. Now we have some more terms uh, which classify the edema. We have intracellular edema. Intracellular edema is when the solvent enters inside the cell. This type of edema will be called as hydropic degeneration. So when we generally talk about edema, we don't actually mean the intracellular. We are generally talking about the interstitial spaces. Ascites, it is a collection of fluid in body cavities. And we have generalized edema. The term for generalized edema is dropsy or anasite. This is important. What could be the causes of edema? Now as we know the mechanism that maintains the fluid inside the vessel or that drives the fluid outside the vessel, we can very well guess the causes of edema, the decreased plasma oncotic pressure. So in the blood vessel, if the oncotic pressure that pulls in the fluid is decrease what will happen the fluid will tend to go out and this will happen in a scenario when there is less of protein so in examples are hypoproteinemia especially albumin when it gets below 2.5 gram per year you have mcq here you have a lot of mcq on edema please do not neglect this area it's very easy then we have increased capillary hydrostatic pressure we had already seen the capillary and hydrostatic pressure and whatever the hydrostatic pressure drives the fluid out. If the pressure increases inside the blood vessel as seen in hypertensive cases it will drive the fluid out. So that is why we see edema in hypertension. Then we have lymphatic obstruction. We had seen that when the fluid goes out of the blood vessel in a normal scenario, it is carried away by lymphatics. So there is no edema as such, even when the fluid goes out of the vessel. But if there is lymphatic obstruction, the normal fluid that seeps out at the capillary end will get collected here. And we see this in the cases of elephantiasis, wherein there is inflammation of lymphatics. Elephantiasis is nothing but the filariasis, and it is ca caused by Eucheria pancrofti. You have MCQ here, you have MCQ here, and you have one MCQ here. Milroy's disease that is the hereditary lymphedema wherein lymphatics are abnormally developed because of which they are not able to take away the accumulated edematous fluid. And in both the cases, we see edema. Then we have tissue factor. Tissue factor, tissue accumulating the fluid due to accumulation of some hydrophilic substances. We had been already talking about that these tissue fluid, this tissue region, this region, it also has some electrolytes and proteins that try to pull out the fluid. But there, there is very insignificant amount of protein, so it is just 4 mm Hg. But imagine a scenario if this interstitial fluid collects something. You know, some kind of substance that pulls the fluid, which is a hydrophilic kind of substance. Then obviously there will be accumulation of fluid here because it will try to pull out the fluid. And this scenario is seen in mixetum. Now we have one more cause that is increased capillary permeability. Of course, if you make holes in the blood vessel, there would be seepage of the fluid out and it will cause edema. And these holes are created by endotoxins. Then we have sodium and water retention. If we have sodium and water retention, it does cause edema. It is most commonly seen in kidney diseases. Next we talk about the morphology and pathology of edema of some important types. And that we will be talking about the nephrotic edema and the nephritic edema. Whenever we talk about nephrotic and nephritic, these terms are really, you know, head scratching. What is the difference between nephrotic and nephritic? It is a difference of O and difference of I. 
let's see it more scientifically what is the difference between the two terms so in nephrotic syndrome what happens is there is heavy proteinuria and in nephritic syndrome there is excessive reabsorption of sodium and water why is it so we'll see a little bit about that in nephritic syndrome what happens is there is hematuria oliguria with azotemia proteinuria and hypertension and the most common nephritic the term itic means inflammation basically nephritic syndrome is a situation wherein there is inflammation of the and most common causes are immunologically mediated injury and in that we have acute post infectious glomerulonephritis iga nephropathy which is characterized by deposition of iga containing immune complexes and this is the most common cause of nephritic syndrome then we have hereditary nep nephritis which is caused by mutations in the gene that codes for the collagen and in this the typical thing to be noted is this hematuria because of the increased gap we have oliguria proteinuria is there but not so significant as in nephrotic syndrome now if we compare this to nephrotic syndrome what is the typical we have in nephrotic syndrome in nephrotic syndrome we have massive proteinuria with daily protein loss of more than 3.5 grams and we have hyperalbuminemia of course if we have protein going out of the blood what happens inside the blood vessels the protein levels decrease so that is hyperalbuminemia and albumin is a main protein that keeps that provides on cortic tension to the blood so because of which the on cortic tension drops and there is loss of fluid and this causes generalized edema then we have one more associated sign that is hyperlipidemia and lipiduria but to differentiate it from nephritic syndrome we don't have we do not have azotemia hematuria or hypertension what would be the cause of nephrotic syndrome nephrotic syndrome is is almost always caused by lesion primary to kidneys especially in children when we talk about adults nephrotic syndrome is usually the renal manifestation of systemic diseases and the most frequent systemic diseases are diabetes amyloidosis and sl so what you have here is important to see